Only a few lines, but what he records gives us a few tantalizing details. It tells us that Musa'ib ibn Zubair, apparently a brother of Abdullah, brings supplies to the holy city. Were these supplies military equipment? No, it says he brought many horses and camels. I believe that this is the year that the followers of Ibn Zubair moved south from Petra to the deserts of Arabia to find a place where they could hold out against the Umayyad forces. All details of this year have been removed from Al Tabri's history. But we know that they obtained many horses and camels, which would have no other purpose than to move many of the people out of the city. This lull in the war continued into the next year. So Ibn Zubair took advantage of the break to undertake a religious project. He decided to rebuild the Kaaba. But Al-Tabri does not tell us where the new Kaaba was constructed. Was it in Petra? Or was it in a new, safer location in faraway Mecca? I believe that the new Kaaba was built in Saudi Arabia, and that the Black Rock was moved there for safekeeping. So even if Ibn Zubair lost the holy city, he still had the rock and a new Kaaba. After a new caliph was established, the Umayyad army returned. This time the army was bigger, and the Umayyads brought large weapons of war with them. Among them, a stone-throwing machine called a manjanik. The war between Ibn Zubayr and Al-Hajjaj took place for six months and 17 nights in the hollow of Mecca. Yusuf ibn Mahak said, I saw the manjanik with which stones were being hurled. The sky was thundering and lightning, and the sound of the thunder and lightning rose above that of the stones, so that it masked it. During the fighting, Ibn Zubair took refuge in a ruined building beside the Kaaba. And this began another battle, which completed the destruction of the Kaaba area of the holy city. Eventually, Ibn Zubair lost the battle, but the cause was taken up by those in the city of Medina in Saudi Arabia and by the city of Kufa in Iraq. I believe that during this time, the Islamic world was thrown into contention. Should they pray towards Petra or should they pray towards Mecca? The great Islamic empire had divided into two. Originally, the Umayyads ruled from Damascus, and they prayed towards Petra. But they were defeated in battle, and now the eastern part of the empire was ruled by the Abbasids, who all constructed their mosques facing towards Mecca. It was during this exact time that we see a change in mosque construction. Before this, every new mosque constructed faced Petra. But now for the first time, some of the new mosques began to face Mecca in Saudi Arabia. But the problem still existed. What do you do with the old mosques? They were built facing Petra. It was during this time that mosques began hanging a sign on the wall to indicate the direction of prayer. It was said in the reign of Uthman that the Caliph ordered that signs be posted to the walls of the mosques in Medina. This was so that the pilgrims could easily identify the direction to which they needed to address their prayers. Now this is a very interesting development, because up until this time, mosques were built so the faithful had only to face the Qibla wall and they faced the holy city. Why would you need to introduce a sign unless the direction of prayer had changed? Around this time, around 89 years after the founding of Islam, a niche was suddenly introduced into mosque structure to denote the direction of prayer. This niche was added to older buildings and also incorporated into newer buildings. Today, the niche is standard in every mosque, but it wasn't originally. There was no niche until the Qibla direction changed. In the Civil War, the Umayyads still prayed towards Petra, but the rebels in the Holy City in Medina and in Kufa chose to pray towards the new Qibla in Saudi Arabia. When the armies of Kufa met Ibn Zubayr, Mujahid ibn Abdullah al-Musli spoke, Praise be to God who has tested us with shackles and tested you by your forgiving us. Ibn Zubayr, we are people who turn to the same Qibla as you. What a strange phrase. We are the people who turn to the same Qibla as you. Muslim historians argue that this means the same Qibla as every other Muslim. But now that we have uncovered evidence of the change of Qibla at this very time, this phrase takes on special significance. The people of Kufa join with Ibn Zubair in accepting his Qibla. This is key to understanding much of what takes place later. Even though Ibn Zubair is eventually killed and seems to lose the civil war, the city of Kufa plays a major role in the development of the new Abbasid dynasty, and Kufa becomes a theological center and a place for copying Qurans. In the Islamic world, things were a mess. Not only were Muslims divided politically, they were divided religiously. Obeying the wishes of Allah, as revealed by the Prophet Muhammad, was at the very heart of Islam. Should you obey Muhammad and the Quran and face towards the forbidden gathering place in Petra, or should you pray towards the sacred house and the black rock, which is in Saudi Arabia? 
So far, Dan Gibson has plotted the existing mosques from the first century of Islam, and they all point to Petra in Jordan. So what about the mosques of the second century of Islam? Do they all point to Petra as well? Here is where things start to get interesting. During my studies, I discovered that the mosques built during the second century of Islam point in different directions. This is what I call the time of confusion. 102 years after the founding of Islam, the mosque of Umar was constructed in southern Syria in the ancient city of Busra. As you can see, the mosque's orientation does not point towards Mecca. But clearly, it does not point to Petra either. Five years later, the ruling Muslims built a palace in the Syrian deserts known as Qasr al-Hayar al-Gharbi. This is a drawing of the floor plan of the palace and the mosque in the corner of the complex. The whole complex seems to face somewhere between Petra and Mecca. A couple of years later, Qasr al-Hayar Ishaqi Palace was built about 100 kilometers north of Palmyra. If we examine the ground plan of the palace buildings, we notice that the palace and its mosque don't seem to align to either Mecca or Petra. Once again, it points in between. Is it possible that something had happened which made the builders not want to choose either Petra or Mecca, so they pointed the Qibla between the two? We can see from the map that the Qibla points exactly between the two cities. It is not a slight error in calculation, but a deliberate avoiding of both Petra and Mecca. So, we must find an answer elsewhere to explain that change. 109 years after the founding of Islam, a mosque was built in Banghor, Pakistan. Like all of the other mosques of the period, it had only a Qibla wall without a niche. This mosque, however, pointed towards Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Here we have the very first mosque that we can identify as pointing to Mecca. There may have been others built that no longer exist, but this mosque is significant because it's the earliest surviving mosque that we can truly say faced Mecca in Saudi Arabia. And what is astounding is that it was built about 100 years after the death of Muhammad. This is very late for Muslim historians, and it is going to cause traditional Islamic history all kinds of trouble. One of the most important buildings in our study is found here on the citadel of Amman, Jordan. This Umayyad palace was built about 122 years after the founding of Islam. Now, if you remember, we looked at an Umayyad mosque built over here. This mosque points directly towards Petra. But when they built the palace, its Qibla direction was directly towards Mecca. So clearly, the Qibla direction changed sometime between the construction of those buildings and the construction of this palace. This will help us determine how and when the Qibla direction changed. Remember, it was during the construction of this palace that the name Mecca first appears in literature anywhere. الغريب ان مكة لم تذكر طول هالسنين هذه لا في الكتب الادبيه ولا الكتب الاسلاميه ولكن ما تم ذكرها الا عند تغيير القبلة وهذا شيء غريب جدا يا ترى شنو الاسباب يعني المفروض انه يذكر حتى في الكتب الاسلاميه في تاريخ الاسلام ولكن لم يذكر هذا الشيء الا عند تغيير القبلة هذا شيء غريب The next major mosque that was constructed was built 32 kilometers south of Amman Jordan This was known as the Mushatta Palace and Mosque and it was built in 743 AD As you can see it was a very large and impressive Umayyad palace, with the mosque located in the southern part of the structure, facing Petra. Indeed, the entire complex faces Petra. What makes this interesting is that it seems that Islam is now split into several groups. There were the traditionalists, who built their mosques, like this one, facing Petra. But there were reformers, whose mosques face Mecca. And there were others, who were not in either group, and they refused to select either of those Qiblas. During this time, a significant change took place in Islamic history. The Umayyad rulers of Islam in Damascus were defeated by the Abbasids of Kufa. In 754 AD, al-Mansur, the new caliph, commissioned the construction of a brand new eastern capital, choosing Baghdad in Iraq as his site. The new city was built on a spectacular design. Rather than the haphazard shape common to most Middle Eastern cities, this city was built in a great circle. The designers went out to a brand new area and used ashes to draw out the city plan on the ground prior to construction. The city, which was completed in 767 AD, was two kilometers in diameter. As you can see on this drawing, the main mosque of the city had no niche indicating the direction of prayer. That was to come later. One wall was used as a Qibla wall, and that wall pointed directly to Mecca, as would all of the other mosques built from now on by the Abbasid rulers. If this is all true, then the Prophet Muhammad and the first four rightly guided caliphs in Islam, and the following Umayyad rulers who ruled Islam from Damascus, all prayed towards the city of Petra. But late in the Umayyad reign, something happened that caused the builders to change the direction of their mosques. Some pointed to Petra, some to Mecca, 
and some chose to be neutral and point between the two. This created a problem for the western half of Islam. The people in the west were still loyal to the earlier Umayyads. So the Islamic world is now split into two. The Abbasid rulers in Iraq control the eastern part of the empire, and the Umayyad rulers control North Africa and Spain. This is an important time in Islamic history, because the Umayyads in Spain now blossom in culture and begin to build beautiful and impressive buildings. The builders in Spain had a problem. Traditionally, Umayyads all prayed towards Petra. But, as we're going to see, something devastating happened, resulting in future mosques no longer facing that direction. Their enemies, the Abbasids, now pray towards Mecca in Saudi Arabia, so they don't want to choose that direction of prayer. So what should the Umayyads do? As I examined the mosques built by the Spanish Umayyads, I discovered a most surprising development. These builders chose neither Petra nor Mecca. Now, as we have seen, some of the builders in the Middle East chose to point their Qiblas between the two cities. But the builders in North Africa and Spain decided to do something completely different. Over the years, historians have always been puzzled by these mosques. Their Qiblas seem to point towards somewhere in South Africa. But all of the African and Spanish mosques point to slightly different places. It all seems very confusing. However, when plotted on a map, we can see that the mosques of North Africa and Spain all have Qiblas that are parallel to a line drawn between Petra and Mecca. So rather than choosing Petra or Mecca, they chose to make their Qiblas parallel to a line drawn between the two cities. كل المسلمين يعرفون بأن مكة موجودة في السعودية وانت في نظريتك اليوم يعني تقول لي مكة موجودة في البترة على أي أساس انت جبت هذا الفكرة يعني شنو الدليل شنو البرهان يعني البرهانك ودليلك على هذا الشيء احنا اللي عارفين أن مكة موجودة في السعودية فعلى أي أساس انت جبت هذا الشيء If you're still not convinced I want to show you something else Do you remember when we discussed the second Islamic civil war Ibn Zubair barricaded himself in the holy city and the Umayyad Syrian army surrounded him and kept him there for four months during the month of October, the Syrians brought a catapult up to the city walls, where they lobbed rocks right into the holy places of Islam. How is this possible? Normally, people live behind the city walls. A catapult would simply smash down people's houses. But in this case, it said the catapult hit the holy places of Islam right in the center of the city. How is this possible? Well, here in Petra, there is a unique feature. Petra had city walls in the north, and in the south, the city walls crossed the valley. But in the north, the city walls did not go all the way to the canyon because there was a water course running along the canyon. I believe the Syrians brought their catapult up the dry river course right to the place where they could lob rocks into the very heart of the city, hitting the Kaaba and the holy places of Islam. Archaeologists from Brown University have been digging here in Petra for many years. Their project was to excavate what is known as the Great Temple Area. As they uncovered the temple, Dan was amazed to find evidence that supported his theory. One of the interesting features of this building is that people built defenses here against attack. See here in this doorway, they closed it in so they could defend themselves. This happened sometime after the earthquake of 551 AD. We can date the defenses of here by the roofing tiles that were used in the construction of these defenses. However, there are no recorded battles in Petra during this time. So we know this happened during the founding years of Islam. But this is not the only evidence we have. During the excavations, the archaeologists uncovered over 400 catapult stones. These stones are buried in about the right place at exactly the right time. This is an extremely strong indication that the battle took place here and that the first original Kaaba was close to this location. So Islam was divided between the traditionalists and the reformers. The traditionalists prayed towards Petra in Jordan, and the reformers prayed towards Mecca in Saudi Arabia, and others deliberately choosing a middle path. How were they ever going to solve this dilemma? Petra, the city of weeping, suffered a fatal calamity. Massive earthquakes shook the Petra region, destroying buildings, temples, and houses. The damage was so bad that the city was never rebuilt again. 